Oh, this whole time I'm like, why is my audio not working? And then I realize nobody's talking. <laughs> I'm, I'm so used to the, the Zooms you get in and they're so loud. Hello, team. Hello. Hi, Bill. Hello. I'm not on video. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> I will have to keep making an announcement. I think the, the best practices of Zoom says that we should leave it so that you don't automatically turn on someone's camera. So I think that's the default. Nice. Mark, what is that? Yo. So so yesterday, yesterday we had our, you know, our training. And I really had to go to the bathroom. And I was like, I, I <laughs> You know, I and I want to be sourced for like turning the camera off, so I just screenshotted it and I walked away. So like, that's amazing. And, that's great. And I, I came back in and like Connor wrote to me f laughing his butt off, but um, yeah. So I made myself the background. That is incredible. And, hey, Bill, and, hang on, are Bill, are you sending me another link, love? Because I can't sign in with the same link on the other device. Hi, Mark. Oh, I thought I texted it to you. Did you not get it? Mm -hmm. I thought I did it right afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do it right now. Hold wait, on. hang on. Yeah, it's no, right. I don't see it. Uh, wait a minute. Hang on. I got it. I got it. Okay. Sorry, yeah. Bill. Found it. No it, what, it did it. It was like a tiny little skinny thing. Okay, now I, I've got to pop off and have to figure out. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll give it. We'll give it a moment as a few people join, and Donna is joining. This is this is the beginning of mastery. Knowing to make sure that you have fifty-five participants and you're only showing sixteen and growing means that a lot of people are still signing on. So we get to be here in the space to connect and enjoy each other's company. Uh, I'll tell you the first. The first pro tip is always put put this in uh, gallery view. For those of you who are not constantly using Zoom by now, if you don't know, on the top right hand corner is a, a speaker view and gallery view. If you're not in gallery view, it's an opportunity for you to see everybody all at once. And if you're joining and you've not turned your camera on, I invite you to do so. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to connect with your team and see all the beautiful faces of the people out here that are going to be working together. Donald. Hey. Justine. Yeah, yeah. You'll see lots of familiar faces tonight, I'm sure. And when Donna gets back on, I will I will launch the presentation and we'll start, we'll make the official introductions, but just enjoy each other's company for for the interim. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Okay. Zara, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Bill? I just finished a phone call. Beautiful. Yay. So good to be here. Another pro tip if you're on your phone and you go this direction, it actually makes it easier for everyone else to see you. Right, exactly. Nice, Azara. So the, the, we can all tell if you're on your phone or your computer by the bars on the side. But if you turn your phone this way, it's less obvious. To the only the experts who are really watching, paying attention, know it. All right, Donna, you've got your you got your uh, you got your setup, and are you on awesome. both devices? Say that again, Bill. Are you on two devices? Were you able to take? I am. Your... I'm on two devices. Beautiful. Okay, very very fancy. Well, we've got, we've got 30 of the 55 registrants, and usually I'm told that that's about 50% is what you, you look at, and we might have a few more stragglers coming on. But for those who are on time, thank you for being on time. I am going to just share my screen here, so I'm kick this off. And like that. All right. And we'll switch back and forth between the presentation itself and the connection and the gallery view. So as I said at the beginning, uh, when we're in the sort of grouped conversations, I would urge you to change it from speaker view, where you only hear the person talking, to gallery view. It allows you to, uh, to actually see everybody else. And the other thing I'm going to ask for everyone to do is if, you, if you'd like to, uh, I'm going to, as people come on, I'm going to try to mute them as they go. But if everyone would take a moment and just mute your own device. 
So that way we don't hear the background noise of all the wonderful things happening in your home while we're having this, uh, this session together. So if you could, please, please mute, your, mute your device and we will begin. So the purpose of tonight, we are doing a virtual meetings and conference calls as part of the Masterful Storytelling and Persuasive Presentations Skills Training. And the, uh, the objective here is for you to be able to host your own virtual meeting and conference calls powerfully. And the process here is that we're going to go through the content in a very interactive way, which means we'll be ask questions, we'll engage you. You can stop either Donna or I, and I'll introduce Donna in just a second. Uh, you can stop either one of us and ask questions. You can either do that through the chat. Uh, you can raise your hand if you have a question. We'll be look, looking at that too. Uh, but generally, if, uh, and if there's something that's really burning, you can just take yourself off mute and, and, and interrupt. It's perfectly fine. We were here to serve. Um, so, with that, my name is Bill Carmody. I am a 25-year international keynote speaker. I support world-changing visionaries who are brave enough to build a better future. Masterful storytelling and powerful presentations are the keys to unlocking persuasion and influence, and that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Joining me with me is the lovely Donna Casali. So Donna started her career journey in operations training program on Wall Street, and then she moved into a training event planning communications position in Madison Square Garden. For 20 years, she was the leader in her community and school district, creating events and programs to support parents and students while she was raising three kids of her own. She started her entrepreneurial journey 10 years ago and started her online virtual business, Beauty Counter, in 2014. Donna's skills range from technology to sales and marketing and PR. She's a master, net master networker and has been using video and virtual meetings actively for the past five years. Donna's currently finishing up ICG and getting certified to be an ICF coach. We did our part two and part three transformational journeys together, and we just started the All True Trainer program together last month. So with that, I'm going to give it to you, Donna. Please take it away. Oh, and you are on mute. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, Bill, for that wonderful introduction. And I'm going to ask you to unshare your screen so we can go back to gallery view so I could yeah. see all of these beautiful faces. Please do. Go. Okay. Wow. Look at all of you beautiful people. So how many of you are being asked to do more virtual meetings these days? Show of hands. Thank you. And how many of you would love to feel more comfortable in front of a camera knowing that you look great on video? Show of hands. Thank you. I am so excited to be here tonight to share five key tips for putting your best face forward in a video conference or when filming your own video or going live on Facebook um, or Instagram. So how many of you know that before you even speak, you're making an impression just by how you're showing up? Okay. So does anyone know what the percentage of our communication is that's nonverbal versus verbal? Would anyone like to share, take a stab at that? 80. Um, okay, I heard 80 from Mark. Donald, you had your hand up. 80 to 90% is what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, all right. That's, those are both great guesses. Any different guesses from that? 70%. 70, I hear 70. Do I have 60? <laughs> okay, I'm going down. I think that's the opposite of what I'm should, I should be doing. Bill, share the slide, please. You may be surprised to know. 90. Who 90. said 90? Me, Lori. Hey, Lori. Okay. Um, I think it's the next slide. Yes, you're right. It's this one right here. There we go. Now everybody's on the edge of their seat, waiting. Did you see it? Um, I no, like I just see me. I see a picture of me. Ah, okay. Hold on. I think it's the next slide, Bill. I'm going to stop share for a second, and I'm okay. going to read I don't know if there seems Well, it's to be okay. We don't need the slide. So, so it's basically 35% uh, of our communication is verbal, and 65 is nonverbal. Oh. So, so what I'm, my part of this presentation is going to focus on the 65% and how you can show up before you even open your mouth and camera, how you're going to appear in a very powerful, commanding way so that you can enroll and engage your audience. 
So who's excited to learn tonight with me? Some tips. And we can, yay, awesome. All right, so I wanna make this really fun and interactive. So, all right, so here we go. First tip, um, well actually, did we go into Bill why people did you do the cone of? Um, I'm going to do that. Yeah. You know what? I, I, it's oh. funny. As we're doing this together, um, can you see this? I want to make sure that we can see the slides. When I go to the full screen mode, sometimes it's not showing. And I'm noticing. Okay. I'm going to pass it back to Bill because I just realized we get to talk about this. Yes, Bill, we can see it. You can see the cone of learning? Okay. Yes. Great. So the reason, in the very beginning, when I actually asked, you know, uh, everyone to to interact and be part of us, to raise your hand, to do all the work we're doing here, is actually how we learn. So we we retain 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, and 50% of what we hear and see, which is why we have a lot of visuals in this presentation. But if you want to retain 70% then it's about what you say. Asking questions, engaging, and actually being part of this presentation will help you retain 70%. And then if you turn around and go do this work right after you've learned all this stuff, you're gonna retain 90% of what you learn here tonight by doing something as far as the, the presentation itself and being able to have a real life experience based on the knowledge you're learning tonight. So that is why we're encouraging you to speak up and participate because it's not just about engaging with us, but it's actually engaging your own body for higher levels of retention. And Donna, I'm going to give it back to you. Beautiful. I love this. Okay. So um, do we have the slide about what, there's a, there was a slide about why they're here and what they're in. Isn't that nice? So yes. So I, we, we, we jumped over that and we started writing into the presentation. Okay, so would fine. you like to go back? We certainly can. Um, I thought you were going to tee that up, but I could, I could, whatever you'd like to do. Go ahead. Um, all right. So, okay. So here's what, I, what I'd like to know. I'd like to hear, okay, let's see. This one? Well, um, so I guess I want to ask the audience, why is this important, how we show up on video? Would anyone like to share why this is important to them? And you could unshare the screen, Bill, because I'd like to kind of frame why we're even talking about this right now. So who would like to share? Life is an enrollment game. Life is an enrollment game. Thank you, Daniel Benjamin. Who else would like to share? I'd like to share. If your screen is, if I, I experience, if your screen is fuzzy and the person is not lit well, I don't, I'm not as invested in what they're saying. Okay. I'm not as connected. Can anyone else relate to what Mark just shared? Raise your hand. Okay, yeah, that was, thank you, both of you. Let's give, let's give them both jazz hands for, for, for sharing. Thank you. It's a whole new world with virtual <laughs> training. By the way, there's actually a reactions button down in the menu bar for those of you that are on a laptop or desktop. It's all down on the bottom right, and it says reactions. It's next to the record button, and you could either um, choose clapping hands or thumbs up. So feel free throughout this presentation. Bill and I would love to know that what we're saying is resonating with you. We get to have a thumbs up, and if you really want to go for it, then we get the, the clappy hands. So, all right, awesome. Let me pull back my, okay, so I am going to share with you five key checkpoints to, as to, that you're going to want to um, kind of check off to make sure that you are showing up in the best way that you can possibly show up. And the first one is framing yourself on camera. And Bill already spoke into being in that horizontal view so we could see jazz hands. And, you know, as we speak, when our hands are very expressive. And if you're on a phone and you have that vertical view, you're not seeing as much of the person on camera. So ideally, when you're leading a meeting, you definitely want to be in this horizontal view. If you have to do it from a phone, you can always turn your phone sideways. Um, so what I'd like to do now is share a slide for, um, I took a picture of myself with four framing options. Can we make that a little bit bigger? Okay, so they're numbered one, two, three, and four. And this is the fun part, you're all gonna vote. I want you all to vote in the chat or, or maybe with your fingers if you don't know how to access the chat. Which, you get to vote two numbers. Which two do you think are the most professional commanding frame frames, how I frame myself in the, in the camera? So go for it. Let's either vote with your hands, one, two, three, or four. So I see three, two, one, we're all over the map here. Okay, a lot of threes, some twos and ones. Okay, all right. One and three. Lori likes one and three, okay. So 
All right, that's interesting. All right, so Lori, would you like to share? Um, we can un, we'll actually leave the, sh leave the screen up. Oh yeah, let's unshare. So Lori, tell me what is it about, actually leave it, leave it up, Bill, sorry, because we wanna refer to it. So Lori, go ahead and share. What is it about those two that you, that you liked best? Um, well, I like that your hands are together. They just seem organized <laughs> being together like that in screen one. Okay. And two is um, there's a little bit of background. You're kind of centered mm -hmm. on, I mean, three, I'm sorry, number three, you're centered with your head has a little bit above you and, you know, just showing your face. Uh, I think two, you're cutting off your forehead and four is obviously you're too low. So okay. I think one and, one and three, possibly one seems to be more, I'm leaning towards one right now. It just seems to be like everybody, when you watch the news ah. and we're sitting you know, on the table and you see everyone sitting across the desk on these news channels, mm -hmm. I think you're in the number one position for presenting or speaking because you could actually use your hands a little bit mm -hmm. to express yourself mm -hmm. in uh, the first frame. All right, Laura, you're going to be giving this training next because that's exactly what number one is. It's the newscaster view. Uh, you know, sitting at the, at the desk, you, you could see hands. The hands are expressive, and it definitely conveys authority. Um, and this would be a great uh, view for someone giving a presentation. Um, you're right about number two. My head is cut off, and that doesn't bother me so much, but I could see how it could bother you. And... Um, the idea really is to have your head as close to the top of the of the frame as possible. You don't want to have dead space above. So number four, there's so much space above my head, my chin's down at the bottom. And, you, and how often do you see people do that? And I, mm -hmm. I just don't look as commanding, right? I look short in stature. I don't know if I'd even list, want to listen as much to what this person has to say in, in, in slide number four or position number four. So thank you, Lori. Let's give Lori a um, virtual um, <laughs> hand. Um, would anyone else like to share? Does anybody else have something they'd like to add? Love to hear from you. And I can't- I would like to add something. Hi, Donna. Hi, Andriana. Um, as a photographer, I picked number two because there's something called the, um, the rule of thirds. Yes. Uh, which means that um, our eye is more engaged with something that's kind of third of the way into the photo. Mm -hmm. uh, and your eyes are at the top third of the photo on number two. Mm -hmm. And um, when that happens in photography, we say that the photo is not static, meaning that it's not, uh, does, it means it, it's almost like captures movement. It engages the eye in that way. If it's straight in the middle, then it's it doesn't it's not as interesting so um that's my yes. my share beautiful thank you andriana let's give andriana virtual uh rounds of applause and yes i was going for the artistic view in number two and i'm glad you caught it you were all so brilliant i'm telling you mm -hmm. um all right beautiful so uh let's unshare this screen and i have a question donna oh of course shocking yeah um what is the uh, what's your take on these virtual backgrounds and things like uh, that that are okay so i am going to put a pin in that question because backgrounds are one of the things i'm going to talk about a uh, little bit later in the presentation okay. that's a great question so uh, thank you for reminding me that i get to to talk about that because i definitely have an opinion about that of course i do <laughs> so okay. all right so now michael had a question too michael oh, oh go right ahead hi michael oh i'm i'm unmuting you michael if you want to talk no, I'm not. It's not letting me. <laughs> you have to unmute yourself. Michael, do you know sign language? <laughs> Mute myself. Sorry. There you go. <laughs> uh, thanks, Bill. But yeah, for me, like, just to say that picture two was my very favorite because, you know, like you and I have interacted a lot, Donna, and it really felt like you were there mm. talking to us. It okay. wasn't. The newscaster view is okay mm -hmm. uh, for the news, but who wants to watch the news? You know, yeah, so that's a good point. <laughs> Actually, can we put that slide back one more time? And I'm so glad that Michael. Um, I I almost feel like I, I planted the three of you in the audience to say these things because these are <laughs> such important points. View two is what I use when, when I'm coaching someone, and it is a more intimate. I'm leaning in. You can see my hands. 
um, as Andriana explained, you, you really see that you have my full presence and attention. And who yeah. wants to see number one? You're right. Maybe, you know, I get it. So thank you, Michael, for sharing that. Let's all give Michael a hand. And we can unshare the screen and move on to, actually, yeah. before we move on, how many of you would like to try right now uh, to adjust yourselves? Now, this is how you can do it. If you're on a laptop or desktop, you can, you can, you could, if you have a chair that goes up and down, you can try that. Or you can just play with this, you know, angling your, your, your computer. If you're on a phone, you can just, you know, play with the phone. I'm just going to notice if anybody's adjusting. Uh, Donna, there's yes. a question that uh, uh, pertaining to this. Uh, Mayor just asked, when you're on a Zoom call on a phone, how do you keep the phone in a steady way? Okay, that's a great question. And I'm actually, um, going to get to that let's see so mayor you keep us honest we're going to get to yeah, that in the yeah. next section. Mayor, actually i skipped over that and i'm so glad mayor asked that question okay so here's a couple of tricks ready for the first one let's unshare the screen um no keep it on gallery view uh perfect so if you have a tripod that's the best way tripods are pretty inexpensive so putting a phone into a tripod so you can do hands-free um if you have books at home, you can create your own tripod. I got this from Chris Delgado. Some of you know who she is. You just stack up a bunch of books like this, and you take your phone, and you create your own tripod. You're, you're leaning it, and that works well, too. Okay? Well, Donna, I don't recognize those things. Uh, those are called books? <laughs> <laughs> this is so you can see how smart I am. These are all, like, mostly my husband. Nice. <laughs> The other thing you can do, you're going to love this one. Everybody has a mug at home, right? If you have a pop socket, how many of you have a pop socket on the back of your phone? Raise your hand. Mm. Some of you. Okay, this will support you. You can use the mug and you can hang your phone like this and you can use the mug as a, as a tripod. Cool. And then you can stack it up on some books. The idea is you want the camera to be a little bit higher. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, you want it to... Let me, let me put a pin in that. We're going to get to it. But yes, don't hold your camera because nobody wants to see it all walking <laughs> and around and it's like everyone's getting seasick as they're talking to you. Um, okay. So thank you for that question, Mayor. Let's see. So I talked about that. Okay. So now we're going to move on to lighting. Lighting is very important. Shadows are not your friend. You could see right now my face is really fully pretty lit. I have a little bit of shadows. Um, but what I'm going to do is take my phone because I'm logged onto my phone on Zoom. I'm going to take my camera off here. Oh, let's see if this is even going to work. Can you find me in this other? I'm yes. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to un... Okay. We're trying a live demo here. She's going to use her yeah. phone. Okay. To, to so I, I'm talking, the thing is that maybe I have to mute my audio. Let's try this. No, you're, you're coming in fine, actually. Can you see me, though? You could see me through as I'm talking. Yes. So what everyone's going to look for is if it's not on the exact screen in gallery view, go one screen over and you'll see Donna um, and you'll see her with the vertical view. So it looks like she's looking in this way. And okay. Donna, you're up. You can, everyone can see you. Oh, but you muted yourself, so hold on a second. We can't hear you. Okay, so, I've got it. All right, I joined audio here. So now I'm on my phone. Okay, Does everybody see me? Great. Okay, yes. perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm in a chair that, that twirls around. I'm just going to spin myself, and I'm going to show you. This is the best way to find the, the best lighting where you are, in you, whether you want to be on a, a, a desktop well, a laptop. This is for when you're finding good lighting for your laptop. Desktops are a little harder because they're stationary. You could try to angle the screen one way or another. But as I slowly rotate around in um, my chair right now, you can see that um, the face. light is changing, right? You see, oh, like this is horrible. Like look at yeah. all this awful shadow because mm -hmm. I have an overhead light up there. And it's casting like, you know, it's, it's lighting this side of my face, but this is in shadow. And then as I have the light behind me, I look like a dark blob. This is no good. Absolutely no good. And I'm coming close to now the lights on this side. I'm coming a little bit more back into focus. Now, right here, let me see if I could turn. Can I turn my camera? Can you turn your camera around on these things when you're on Zoom? Uh, I I I'm just going to turn around. 
I have a, I see I have a lamp in front of me. Does everybody see the lamp? Yes. Okay. So that's the idea is you want to put a lamp uh, really behind either your desktop, your laptop, or your phone and have the soft diffused light from the lamp um, come and light your face. And I'm turning more back towards my desktop, which is huge. And that's giving me uh, light from there. So I'm going to actually leave this one. I'm going to say goodbye over. And she'll be back. I promise. <laughs> And notice also too, for those of you who are on phones, whenever you make an adjustment, this is all we see. So when you're making adjustments to your phone, that's this is that that's the thing we see. So just be aware of that. Yeah, exactly. So when you're when you're when you're on your phone, you just have to be sensitive to the, the, what your camera is picking up because you're not seeing it, but everybody else sees. Oh, I'm gonna play with my phone. I'm gonna move this over here, and it's just like okay then. And if you ever see people out in public and they're doing this, they're holding their phone and they're like spinning themselves around. That's what they're doing. They're looking for the best light. So let's all try, try this. Now, if you're on Zoom um, with your phone, you can definitely do this. If you're on Zoom with a laptop or desktop, if you have your phone nearby, I want you to just go onto your camera, your forward-facing cameras, if you're going to take a selfie. And I'd love you to just hold the camera in front of you and just do a little 360 twirl around your room and just see you know, how the shadows are changing as you turn around and as you find your best light. And then we're gonna ask for some shares. Mm. So I see some of you are doing it. And while you're doing it, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about more about lighting. So, so light from the side cast shadows, unflattering shadows. Ideally you want diffused daylight. In the day you wanna use a window. You don't want direct sunlight because that'll just really wash you out. But at nighttime, a soft light source behind your laptop or desktop um, using a table lamp with like a white bulb. You don't want a yellow bulb. And um, okay, so I would love to have um, someone share their experience with that. Someone who hasn't shared before, would anyone like to share? Uh, Any Go ahead. Yes, I turned off the overhead light, which okay. helped a lot because I was having too much darkness. On my, it's not ideal the way it is, but it's much darker before. Yeah, so Bonnie, good point. Uh, overhead light um, is, is not your friend for sure. So yes, mm -hmm. you definitely want a table lamp. And you notice that you your shadows went away when you did that. Thank you for sharing. That was great. Everyone give Bonnie a, a hand. Would anyone else like to share? I think Eleonora might have had her hand up. Hey, yeah, just basically because my chandelier is above my head. So, like, if it's behind me, like, the light is not going to be so good. But if, if I'm facing it, the light is obviously better. Exactly. Beautiful. Thank you, Eleonora. Everyone give her a hand. Thank you. All right. So let's move on. No, to you changed my life. Oh, Chucky, did you change your light? No, you did. You changed my life by adjusting my light. light. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I want to, like Donna. Yes, love. I just wanted to say something. So, like for me, what I like to do is look at myself, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is my frame. I'm look, when I'm talking, I, I'm not just talking at the phone. I'm actually looking at myself so that I can see how I'm occurring to others, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I can't. I, if I look there, I, I'm not there or I'm, I'm down here, or I'm up here. It's like very important to look at yourself. I think I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, so that's, thank you, Justine. Thank you for sharing. Give Justine a hand. Uh, we're actually gonna move right into that. That's called eye contact. Where should you look? And I would say that for the most part, what you just shared is absolutely spot on, Justine. You wanna have an awareness of how you are coming across, but at the same time, you don't want people to think you know, that you're looking at you like it, you could tell when people are just looking at themselves versus looking out. It's, it's about focusing out. Right. And so you kind of get to do both at the same time. And so here's, here's what I'm going to say to support you. Your best camera angle is always a little bit above your eyes. So if I right now take this ruler and I go right from my eyes and I'm going right directly to my, I'm going to go right to my screen. Um, my camera is actually a little higher. So that's the thing. You want your camera to be basically maybe the height of your forehead or the top of your head. 
so that it's a downward angle. I'm gonna show you why. Bill, if you could pull up that next slide. I took two selfie photos today. I wasn't looking so good, but it doesn't matter. I, um, uh, so one of them, let's see. The you next, see it now? I yeah, the two, did you, the two, the two photos that I sent you? Right here. These, okay, perfect. Can we make this a little bigger? Yeah, when I do that, I just wanna make sure you can still see it. Yep, perfect. Okay, so the first photo on the left, that is the double chin view where a lot of people have their laptop and they're looking down into their laptop and it's super unflattering. I mean, I think that's obvious. Does anyone not think that's on? Does anyone think I look good in that picture? All right. Um, yes. <laughs> you always look good. Right. Okay. That's a loaded question. I said that I love you very much. So <laughs> the photo on the right is me doing the, the typical blogger thing where I, I'm actually holding the phone a little bit higher and you can see that my eyes are looking up and just look at the shape of my face. I have a nice jawline. I'm looking very, you know, like I have a, a, a long, just trim face and I mm -hmm. even look thinner in that photo, right? My shoulders, <laughs> my arms. So yeah, that demonstrates how can camera angles are super important and where your eyes are going. You don't want to look like you're looking down because then that's that photo on the left. I'm not giving eye contact to people in that photo. Whereas the one on the right, you really can see right into my eyes. Um, so, okay, please unshare it, Bill. Thank you so much. So if you've been on a video um, uh, chat with me, um, some of you may, may have heard me say, <laughs> I want to see what color your eyes are. Who's been, on a, who's been on a video chat with me when I've said that? Donald, yes, okay. All right, yeah, because you know that, that means you're looking straight out, there's no shadow on your face. Like seeing people's eyes is super important. And with all these virtual trainings now that we're stepping into and we're doing processes, you know, for those of us who really wanna connect emotionally, it's like last night I was on a video chat with someone who whose mom passed away and it was three women and we were all supporting her and you know it was a beautiful moment and it was all about connecting and we want to see people's faces so it doesn't have to be you know for business it could be for so many reasons mm -hmm. people want to see you and connect with you through that camera so give them give good eye contact because people love that all right um let's see we are almost through that was number three, then we're moving on to number four, which is um, your appearance. So this kind of goes without saying, you know, show up looking like you want to, you know, be there and that you're excited to be there. So make sure that you, um, your collar's not sticking out, you brush your hair, you um, check your teeth to see if you don't have any food in them. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna, you know, in terms of what you're wearing, like I love how super confident some people are. They come on on Zoom without a shirt on and I'm, I'm gonna say no, you know, like British definitely have a shirt on, that's important. Um, and. Yeah, I know, darn it. I know Daniel's upset. I know, I know. Listen, uh, some of you I love, I, you know, I appreciate, you know, seeing these men without shirts on, but like in a Zoom conference, it's, you know, a little distracting. So, okay, actually, I'm just having fun right now. Um, but in terms of what you want to wear, um, solid colors work well. You, you want to think about what's your background and what you're wearing. So if I was wearing right now, like the color of my shirt was either the color of these blinds or the color of the wall, I'd just blend in. So think about that a little, especially if you're presenting, right? You want to um, be in business, uh, casual or business professional, depending upon what the presentation calls for. And for women, a little bit of makeup, um, the camera tends to wash us out. So a little bit of blush, um, some mascara, a little color on the lips goes a long way. So that's my, that, those are my two cents on appearance. And then the last thing is background. So who asked about the virtual background? That was- I did, but I just had a brilliant idea. Tell me, tell me. Zoom makeup. Zoom makeup. <laughs> Jennifer Myers, we got to run with that, sweetheart. We got to do it. Okay, I'm complete. <laughs> um, okay, I'm not sure what you mean by Zoom makeup. Well, it's, okay, we'll talk about it. It's a thing. It's actually a thing. Like, here's the thing. A lot of us are working from home now. And, um, 
you know, so they're, they're people that are used to showing up a certain way in the office. And it's not about putting on a full face of makeup, but it is about putting a little bit on just to enhance your features. And I mean, some of you know that I'm in the makeup business. So I think I'm going to do a video about this, how to put your best face forward and exactly which, which makeup you, you get to, to wear. So thank you for that, Shaki. That's how I, that's how I interpreted it. Okay, um, so in terms of backgrounds, um, virtual backgrounds are great, if, especially if you have like a lot of mess behind you, you wanna keep your background simple and uncluttered. And like if my shade is like this and it's out of whack, it's just distracting. So you wanna look at what's going on behind you. And if it's a good quality virtual background where you're not like doing the morphing in and out type of thing, because sometimes it, it's a little wonky, I would say go for it. Um, like Mark right now, let's look at Mark. As Mark, come forward. Like, see how Mark is kind of disappearing in and out? Like, he's like the shapeshifter man. Oh, on. What are you talking, are you talking about? What's going on? What's. Yeah. <laughs> so that's exactly <laughs> what not to do. But, but if he stays the right the way he is, he looks great. He's got this beautiful skyline of New York City behind him. So, um,. Yeah, so that's, um, so I think backgrounds, just in just keep them clean and uncluttered. All right, so let's go to the last slide, Bill. I created a acronym for you uh, to remember these five checkpoints, and it is FLEEB, FLEE with a B at the end. And I shared this with someone the other day, and they told me about a series they're watching called Fleabag. I don't know if anybody, any of you are watching that, but yeah. FLEEB, stands for framing, which we talked about, how you frame yourself in the camera, lighting, eye contact, so having the, having the camera a little higher and looking straight ahead into the camera, appearance, dressing to impress, checking yourself, making sure you look good, and then the background, so that's leap. And I see, Lori, you have your hand raised. I just, oh. go ahead, Lori, what's your question? Oh no, I'm just trying to see if my camera was. Oh, okay, you're doing a little measurement. All right, so you've been all so awesome. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to give you a bonus one. Can you un can you un um, unshare, Bill? Yep. Don't I can ask you real quick before you move on? Oh yeah, we're not going to move on. Don't worry. But go ahead, you can ask. Good evening, this is Aeneas. Good to see everyone. Um, I wanted to know how the heck you get the background uh, mark and like how do you, what feature is that? Is it like an add-on or is it like an app or how do you do that? Um, would you wow. like me to answer or would you like to answer Donna? You know, I, it doesn't work on my camera. I forget. Is it under the video? I think so if I, would hand. you like me to answer? Can I share? Yeah. One, I'm going to have you share because I don't use it because my uh, desktop is old and it doesn't support a virtual background. So I'd love you. All to right, share. cool. So actually I'm going to use my camera to be able to show you all. So I have, I have multiple screens up. And I'm going to show you all. Wait, wait one Sorry. second. Donna, Donna, can you stop sharing? Thank you. Yeah, I don't know why that happened. Sorry. All right. There so you go. give me one moment. I'm going to take off my virtual background so you all can see what I'm working with. All right. Down here on the bottom left, is this showing? Yeah. Okay. It's backwards. Mm -hmm. You can see. It says choose virtual background. Right. In the video settings, I'm hoping it's coming out for y'all. Yep, we can see. All right. In the bottom. And from there, you're gonna take a. You can upload a photo, which is what I've done. Which you can do here. You can add image, mm -hmm. um, and then from there you can select it. So what I've done is, I've uploaded New York City uh, skylines already. I have them for sunset and for evening, so mm -hmm. I can keep one consistent. And with that, I'm going to stop my video so y'all don't get dizzy as I move my camera around. All right. So I don't have that option. That's, uh, that's why I, I know how to get there, but I guess I have Is this option. Is there an option from the Zoom? It's only um, on the desktop version. So if you're on no, your mobile, No, think. not true, because I'm I on my phone. Me too. And if you go into the more section, which is the lower, yeah. left, uh, lower right corner, there's more dot, dot, dot. And if you click on more dot, 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 it gives you the option to go to the chat. Then it gives you the option to go to virtual background. Kaboom. 
And by the way, yeah, not, not everyone's phone will have that. And I want to be clear, that's also true oh. on the computer. And the reason why is the newer phones, the newer computers have the higher processing speeds. And that's why Zoom will allow it. So if you have an older phone, like an iPhone 6, you're not going to see that. But if you have a newer phone, mm -hmm. you will. And the same thing okay. with computers. And some computers, if you're going there like, Mark, I just went to that same spot. I don't see anything. It's because your processing power may not be strong enough to support a virtual background. So uh, what happens with the iPad? Uh, same. I don't think it's fa it's a flash. It's flash based memory, but I don't believe it has a processor that's fast enough to be able to do a virtual background unless it's okay. like a brand new iPad. So it's, I mean, not, in the, it's not in the meeting setting. Go to more where it says more at the top. Yeah, exactly. And then click more and it will tell you oh, who just popped up. Mm. You go to more, you'll see virtual background chat meeting settings, mm -hmm. minimize meeting virtual background. Yeah, so we don't have that. Mine is only chat and meeting setting. Oh, okay. I think I screwed up. Okay, I think this is all anybody cares about is the virtual background. <laughs> okay, so, this is, so thank you everyone because now I know I get to learn about the virtual background so that I could teach that. And thank you, Mark. Mark You're sure. welcome. I appreciate you. Okay, so um, who would like a bonus sixth um, tip? Raise your hand if you'd like a bonus sixth tip. You ready? So now don't worry, I know you have FLEAB, F-L-E-A-B-B. -B. I'm not gonna make this complicated, it's B. And the second B is blue blocker glasses if you wanna look extra smart. See, does everybody see me? Okay, that was a joke. People are supposed to be laughing right now. And <laughs> I am complete. So now we're gonna share. Bill, can you share the slide for the next slide, please? I can. <laughs> My attempt at humor, that will be cut from the next presentation. <laughs> they all can't they all can't be winners donna it's all you know, I, I, wait I'm, I'm, donna we Dan. laughed wait, we're all on donna. mute yes I, I think that i don't know if this is part of your presentation already but that blue blocker thing could go in a what not to do i know because doesn't it look weird right when i wear them yeah that's yeah, it, like it could you could have a kind of a what not to do section you know and put that blue blocker in there Justine, you're gonna you're gonna come on the road with me for the tour of this video presentation. You and me. Thank you, Justine. Hey, Donna. Yes. Donna, this is Adam. I have just one follow-up question, if that's okay. Um, one of the things that I notice um, in myself is in my background. So, for example, you can see in mine, I have a uh, a round mirror. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I notice where people will not notice what's behind them. They'll have like a picture, and like the corner of the picture will look like it's kind of like going right into their head. Um, do you intentionally choose your background to be like neutral or a soft pattern or do you, do you give any thought to it, I guess is my question, because like even as, like now if I frame my head, does that look better or does that look better, you know what I'm saying? Well, okay, to answer your specific question about you, because you're, um, I see a lamp being reflected in that, so I prefer when you're centered because my eye is being drawn to the lamp that is it reflecting in the mirror. So I rather, it almost creates a halo around your head. And I think be, being symmetrical to me, my eye is drawn towards that. But there is actually um, something about being asymmetrical. You know, it really goes back to photography and what Andriana was speaking into. And I don't know if she's still here and she could speak into this, but you know, I'm kind of between two windows, a little asymmetrical, but you definitely, to your point, get to think about what's behind you. And if a picture is hitting your head at a weird angle, like be aware of it, because it can be definitely distracting. Mm -hmm. What's Donald laughing at right now? <laughs> All right. Okay, let's share that last slide, please. Okay. Yep. Actually, why don't we just say, what's one key insight you learned today? I have oh, the slide. Oh, the slide? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So this is, a, this is like time for question sh sharing. What is one key insight that you learned? Alicia is raising her so hand. I, I just learned how to do. Uh, <laughs> I just did the virtual background. All right. Give her a hand. That's awesome. Look at you. You're in San Francisco, even though you're stuck in your apartment in Queens. Apartment. Awesome. Who says right. you can't travel right now? I see a lot of you are in San Francisco. That's amazing. You're all by the Golden Gate Bridge. Wait, right. Why is mine coming out like this? I like the lighting. So Sharmista mm -hmm. is kind of having a poltergeist moment. You're like in and out. And same with Daniel. 
Because okay. Daniel, so Daniel, the reason yours is going out now and like that is because, and if you're having a poltergeist moment, it means your processor is not strong enough to do it without a green screen. So if you want, if you, you it means it's right on the edge, which it technically works, but it won't work effectively without a green screen backdrop. So you can go on Amazon, grab yourself a green screen, drop, drop it behind you, and then that will work fine. Otherwise, it's going to be poltergeisty. Okay. Uh, Belisha, did you have a question? I saw your hand was up. Oh. Yes, no? Alicia Marie, where is, she? where is she? No, I thought it was hilarious when Donna said, if you ever, if you ever had me ask you if I could see your eyes on the chat. So that's when I raised my hand. <laughs> every single time she says that, every oh. single time. Cool, well, while you're speaking, what's one thing you learned from Donna's section? Um. Maybe a bit about camera angles. Okay, are you gonna come I, I don't, uh, sure. Come on camera, show I'm us outside. your camera angle. Show us what you learned. There you are. Yay. Show us your best camera angle. I don't know. And lighting, you would face the light. There we go. There you go. Yeah. Nice. She found her angle, okay. My work is done here. That's right. Work is she done. showed you what she learned. She demonstrated it in real time. Okay. Thank well, you. I hope you all had fun and learned something tonight. And it was yeah. a pleasure to, um, and I want to just thank Bill for inviting me to be a part of this presentation. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate thank you, Donna, for being here. And this is part one. We're going to go into part two right now and go into the content piece of this. So, uh, Donna, thank you so much. Can we all give Donna a jazz hands? Thank you for all her brilliance and excellence. Yay. Hearts. Yes. Hugs, all that fun stuff. We love Donna. Thank you, Donna. So, so can I just ask one question? When we were talking about the camera, is it right on the Zoom, the presentation part? What? Say that one more time. Okay, I can talk to you offline on that. Why don't you continue? I would. I. Why don't we continue? I will talk to you later on. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. We're available. No problem. Yeah. Thank you again, Donna. I'm gonna just go back to sharing my screen. Here we are. Okay, now just to confirm, when I go into presentation mode, I wanna make sure you still see it. So it should still read on my screen, what's one key insight you learned? Yes, everyone shake their head yes, if you see it. No, if you don't. Okay, good. All right, so that first section was your setup, giving you all the opportunities to make sure that you're going to be seen and you're gonna be heard effectively and brilliantly. Now, what are you gonna say? What's your content? How do you turn your passion into your profession. That's what we're gonna talk about next. So when you do what you love and you do what the world needs, you found your mission. When you do what you love and you know what you're good at, you found your passion. When you do what you're good at and what the world needs, you find your profession. And when you do all three, you find your purpose. And so that's what I wanna, we're gonna talk about today is what called you to your profession. So why do you do what you do now? I'm just going to take one or two shares here. Why do you do what you do now? And go ahead and take yourself off mute if you want to jump in. Bill, real quickly, um, can you put that on the feed or put in the chat, that statement, those three statements, so we can have that, please? You got it. I will absolutely share that onto the feed. And you can remind me if I forget, because I'm going to do a lot of stuff tonight. And uh, remind me at the end. Thank you. And I will do that for sure. And I'll put it back up there. You can do a screenshot, and I'll show you how to do that, too. So you can grab it right, right away. Uh, so... What called you to your profession? Give me, I want one or two people to just either raise their hand or take themselves off mute. Why do you do what you do? Because this is really important to the next part of our section. To help others. To help others. Great, Daniel. And specifically in the helping of others, what is it you're doing specifically to help others? I am helping them become properly protected, debt-free and financially independent. Now, see the difference? When the first time he said, I'm here to help others, that's generic. It didn't necessarily land for a lot of people because, okay, great, you're, you're an altruistic guy. We love you. Thank you, Daniel, for being you. But when you talk about how you do what you do to help others, it becomes very specific. Financial freedom, financial planning, very specific. So that's the ability to connect what you're passionate about with what you do for people. So you're helping others through financial planning. You're helping others through protecting themselves with insurance, right? There's lots of ways to say that, but that's how you sort of bring that up. Thank you so much for sharing. Everyone give Daniel a hand. Thank you, Daniel. Excellent. So one else, one other person. Someone else want to share? Frank? I help. Oh, go ahead. So, sorry, who jumped in? 
I help uh, people navigate uh, fighting the insurance companies so that they can get what they want. So I um, empower them and give them resources and tools so that they feel like they can uh, get what they want and also to do it on their own when I'm not there. Beautiful. Beautiful. And so you're, you're standing up for the everyman. You're making sure they get what they need and that they get what they deserve. Love it. Yes. Excellent. Now I'm going to show you how this actually ties in to all the rest of the stuff that we're doing here tonight. Because when you are passionate about what you do, you will become more comfortable with actually sharing it. So I'm going to ask you another question, which is what makes you uncomfortable in your presenting? So you can have all the great camera angles. You can have all of the fantastic lighting that Donna just shared. But if you're showing up nervous, it's hard for people to understand you. So I'm going to ask you to be vulnerable with me right now and tell me what makes presenting uncomfortable for you. And go ahead and take yourself off mute. So I would say um, judgment uh, from others. Yes. And notice, was, thank you, Sharmista. And, and Sharmista, what she just said was, when you think about judgment from others, you're no longer thinking about your audience. You're in your head. And when you're in your head, you're dead. So essentially, if you start thinking more about you, you're going to lose what your train of thought is. You're going to forget what you're this, supposed no, to say. This is the bill part of it. This is the content part of it that I was more oh, interested goodness. in. Hey, Michael, you are off mute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm glad you're interested though. I'm like, oh God, this Bill is such a jerk. I can't believe he's oh, droning. That would have been much worse. I was like what I'm saying. Yeah, my, I was talking to my roommate. Okay. Hey, perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, yes, Lori, please dive in. I would say for me, it would be losing my train of thought. Yes. Like as I'm speaking and saying what I'm saying, I kind of fear getting lost and forgetting what I want to say next. Beautiful, beautiful. How many of you, by show of hands, how many have had that experience where you're in the middle of a thought, even in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, you're like, where was I going with this? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna happen. And here's the beautiful thing. If you're worried about what other people think about you, it's gonna happen more. Mm -hmm. If I'm here focused on, I'm gonna be of value to my audience, you guys get to come get what you get, and we're gonna have this conversation today, then I'm focusing on you in the audience. And therefore, even if I screw up and go, oh shoot, what was I gonna say next? You can hear that I'm coming from a place of empathy. You can understand that I'm coming here to share value and I'm not being egotistical and saying, don't I look great right now? Isn't this awesome? Talk about me, 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 right? Because when you start worrying about what other people think of you, you lose yourself and you, you can't, you're going to lose your train of thought. So the very first strategy of that not losing your thought is to focus on not on you, but on your audience. What is the needs of your audience? And they promise you they'll be very forgiving if you lose your train of thought, as long as they get that you came here for them. Excellent. Everyone give Sharmista and Lori uh, jazz hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to keep going. Okay, perfect. So the most powerful bit of content that I received from my speech coach was that effective communication is not what the speaker says. It's what your audience hears. I'm going to say that again. Effective communication is not what the speaker says. It's what your audience hears. So how do you know what your audience has heard? You're presenting after all, right? How do you know? Ask them. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely, Justine. And please keep diving in, you're feel free. I love the fact that you're answering my question. Get to know your audience before you present to them. So that's the first thing. Who am I speaking to, right? Thankfully, I know a lot of you on this phone, so I already are on this Zoom call, so I already have a sense of who you are, what you've been about. I've been through some trainings with you. I've had experiences with you in other domains. You're here because we've connected at some point or you've connected with Donna. But if I don't know you and I'm walking in cold, how can I get to know my audience before I meet with them? Ask questions. Yes. <laughs> you can ask your audience questions. How, what, why, open-ended questions. You can cyber stalk them. You can go and find their other profile on LinkedIn or Facebook or any other social media platform. And then essentially what you want to do is confirm what you've prepared is what they want to hear or discuss. And if not, change it. If you suddenly you're like, oh my God, Bill, this is not what I came here to get, then we stop. 
and we refocus. I don't care about these slides. I know that they've served a lot of people that I presented to, but I have no attachment to these slides being the value. The value is our ability to connect with each other, ask powerful questions, and have a discussion. So you want to check in with your audience throughout the presentation. Specifically, how's their energy? Hint, it's a reflection of your energy. Do they need a break? Are they multitasking or hanging on your every word? When I see people with their phones up checking stuff out, I know I've lost my audience and I got to stop, which is why I've asked everyone to be on camera so I can see how are you? And what more can be done as the presenter to engage them? What more can I do in order to support you? As a speaker, you're listening while you're presenting. And when you're on a conference call with no video, it's really hard to do that, isn't it? But when you actually have Zoom, you can check in with not, maybe not all, when you're on slides, you can't see everybody, but you can see a lot of people and you can see who's nodding off. You can see who's checked out. You can see who's basically took themselves off of camera because they're gonna go do something else, right? You can see those things and it's giving you feedback. And if you've lost them, you don't keep going, you stop, re-engage them and get them back. So what else makes a great presenter? We bring our passion, our passion. The reason I asked you the first question was what brought you to your profession is so you can connect with your passion. High energy, which basically allows you to have the audience experience all you have to offer. And trustworthy. Do you feel like you can trust this person or do you feel like they're trying to sell you something? Do you feel mm -hmm. at any moment they could just drop in and basically just do, give you a little curveball? You're not gonna keep your guard down. Uh, it has to be easy to understand. If I'm talking really, really fast as a New Yorker, then you're gonna be really hard to understand me and you're gonna tune me out, right? So slow it down, slow your roll. And we can feel a deep sense of empathy that they actually care about who we are. They're believable. They're not making wild, inaccurate claims. If you hear someone make a wild, inaccurate claim, even one time in their whole presentation, the whole presentation's out the window because they no longer know what to trust. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know something, don't make it up acknowledge it. Someone could ask me a question tonight. And even though I've been doing this for 25 years, I can still say, you know what, time out. I don't know the answer to that. So we can go over to Uncle Google and see if we can find a quick answer. Or we can say, hey, can I get back to you on that? I've got a whole peer group that I can tap into and I'll come back and answer that question. And likability, you know, we enjoy, we enjoy listening to them because we get that they are here for us and we really like them. And they're authentic. They're not trying to be someone that they're not. Yeah. I wanted to say something about that because the biggest thing is, can I trust you? And if you are going to be honest and say, I don't know, I don't think you're stupid. I think you're trustable because when someone says no to me or someone says, I don't know to me, I feel like they're being a, a humble human. They're, they're not right. acting arrogant and, and they're with me. Right. And they're more relatable because yeah. here's the thing, if I have all the answers and I'm Mr. Know-it-all, it's not very relatable. Because either I'm full of my own ego and I just love to hear myself talk, or I'm at this place where I'm so arrogant as to not think that I know it all that I can't come from a place of I'm still learning. The humility of I'm still learning allows us to be able ability to just step in and be engaging and connect and understand that it's not going to be perfect every time. And that's not my goal. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be my best always, all the time. But it doesn't mean that I'm perfect. I don't expect perfection because perfection is an illusion. Everyone give Justine a hand. Thank you, Justine, for that comment. Yay. And what else came up for you as we're going through that section? Anything else that shows up? Thanks, Justine. Yeah, well, I think we're going into also a little bit about uh, people's personalities. Because sometimes if you are, uh, this type of personality doesn't mesh well with another personality. So sometimes likability can be a little bit of a challenge. And uh, I've had that before in the past. It's no matter how much I try to get through to a specific person on something, on an idea or, or whatever, it's our personalities, they just don't mix. Yeah. And yet the thing about personalities are, is that it really comes down to how, how we can be in our way of being, even if somebody has a very different personality than us. And so that comes from a place of being present. Right. And so specifically with that presence, I can understand sort of whether somebody needs me to be faster or slower based on how they're responding to my conversation. When I'm fully present, I can see their body language. If they're holding, folding their arms, and they're, mm, you know, then I know that I'm just not getting through. And so I need to ask a question. I need to stop. I need to engage my audience. 
And so part of this is the listening with the body, seeing people's facial expressions, seeing who, where they're at. Because the other thing too, my, the best sales advice I'd ever received was the person who does the most talking in any given meeting thinks it was a great meeting. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. The person who does the most talking in any meeting thinks it's a great meeting. So if you know that and you want somebody actually to buy from you or you wanna enroll them in something, who should be doing all the talking? Not you. Of the person. client. Yes, the client. Right. The as I once heard, as I once heard uh, a saying, a uh, guy gave you two ears and one mouth to listen more and talk less. That's right. Use them in that proportion. And yep. also, the, I feel like presentations get to be collaborations. Yes. And the, the people in the room might be a bigger expert. The one person might be a bigger expert than I am. Who the hell knows? And exactly. cool. Because then we get to take each other higher. And the end result is everybody goes higher. Not like, oh shit, this guy in my audience knew more than I did. Oh, I suck. No, yay, the room goes higher. I love it. And Justine, what I love about that comment too is it also allows you to not be fearful. So let's say that somebody right now asked me a question that I don't know the answer to. So uh, who's got like a really, really obscure yoga question? If you know yoga. Okay, <laughs> yes, dude, Joshua, give me a really obscure <laughs> yoga question. <laughs> Um, <laughs> how do you, how do you recommend balancing in an ep Ekapada Kundanyasana? Beautiful. And I can't even re-say that question because those <laughs> words are not, they're so foreign to me. But I would say, that's a great question, Joshua. Does anybody on this Zoom call know the answer to Josh's question? <laughs> and I'm asking legitimately, does anybody on but this Ma <laughs> Michael may know. I think Michael does know. Michael, you want to get <laughs> off, of, of, off of your mute for a second and tell the answer to that question? That's you, Joshua. N not me. I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm asking that question for one simple reason. Most of the time, the larger your audience are, the more there's wisdom inside your crowd. And so mm. I knew that both Joshua and Michael were yoga instructors. I am not. <laughs> I take yoga classes, but I am nowhere in the advance. I'm a novice. I'm a newbie, right? But if someone asks me a yoga question that's out of context because they're talking about presentation skills, I can use the wisdom of my crowd by asking, does anyone in the audience know the answer to that question? And suddenly, we're actually in, we're taking exactly Justine's point. We're pulling information out of the team as opposed to just one subject matter expert driving the bus. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Jennifer, please. So Bill, just from my listening, it sounds like we're creating in any space that we get to have like an audience to connect with, we're creating an infinite brain trust. That's correct. That's okay. absolutely correct. And Vanessa chimed in with, don't always assume you're the smartest person in the room. Exactly, Vanessa. In fact, I, I, I take the position that I am never the smartest person in the room. It's the opposite. I am always a humble learner. I'm here to facilitate learning. And if that means that I get to learn something tonight, which I already have, look all the stuff I learned from Donna, it's awesome. That's why I had her come join me with this, is that I knew she had the information and insights that I didn't know. And so to be able to be in that humble place where we all support, it's fantastic. So everyone give Jennifer and Vanessa jazz hands. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Vanessa. Awesome. I'm gonna go back in here. One second. Okay. Oops, we already did that. Skip over there. So we, here's the meat. I wanna make sure the final piece of this that we're really speaking to into tonight is talking about what you came here to get, which is virtual conference calls and meetings. So I'm gonna reinforce the, the part that Donna spoke and I'm gonna just break it down a little bit more. People use 7% of what people hear from you are your words, 7%. 38% is the tone of your voice, the inflection, how you go up and down and basically put emphasis in your words. And 55% is body language. So when Donna talked about your hands and being able to see your hands, it makes deeper connections. It allows people to see you and to connect with the rest of your audience. So it's really important. Why are we doing Zoom? Because you can feel it. You can really feel it when you're coming across the camera and you can have intimate meetings in ways that most people are just not thinking about these days because they, oh, I, I know what to do when I'm in person, but how do I bring that across virtually? It's being able to look at this camera and connect with your audience. It's being able to bring your whole self into the actual presentation. 
And so these are the challenges. It's hard to read the overall body language. It's challenging to be audience centered when you're on a, on a virtual meeting. And phone often leads to multitasking. So if you aren't on camera, you can be sure people are doing multi, multitasking. It's difficult to engage the reactions and key points to keep the meeting flowing. And it's hard to engage the participants, assuming you even know who's on. Silence on these conference calls can be painful and uncomfortable because you don't know what they're thinking. And when your client is on mute, they're almost certainly talking amongst themselves about you or about whatever you just proposed. So there's a way to overcome this. We start by using exactly what we're doing tonight. Zoom, Skype, GoToMeeting, any, uh, any of these, these platforms ensures you can see everyone you're speaking to and read their body language. And if you notice, we have this chat function and I love it because you guys are sending messages back and forth. But if I'm presenting and my teammates are trying to get my attention, it actually is very distracting. <clears throat> and the reason I'm not reading the chats while I'm speaking is because I'm focused on you. If I'm focusing on the chat, I'm multitasking and I'm doing them both poorly. So if you actually are on a team and you're working with a group of individuals and someone's presenting, give them the space to present. Don't be that person that's gonna go on there and, and try to force the conversation the way you want it to go because you think they're not hitting the mark. If you need to jump in, you can jump in, but that's different than trying to micromanage your team member to do their work. And also when possible, stand and deliver. Use a standing desk or prop up your laptop so that you're not sitting because your energy drops when you're sitting. So many of my webinars, so many of my points, I'm actually at a dresser level so I can really be focused and standing the whole time and I can really get my energy levels up. And of course, when we're working remote, we wanna ensure a quiet background because it's not professional. When we hear all that background noise, I understand it's a, it's a way of being right now in our homes. We can't help it. But at the same time, as this continues and we can expand, the, with the ones that have that sort of total quiet and that silence are gonna be land for people in a very powerful way. So to the extent that you're able to try to get yourself a quiet background. And then if you're not sure, then have everybody introduce themselves, have them connect, be clear about who's speaking and consider multiple introductions throughout. In terms of pacing, you wanna slow down and engage frequently. So I've said a lot there, so I'm gonna stop sharing for a second, just to check in. What landed for you in that section? Standing. Standing. I love that. Because you know, like when I'm talking on the phone, let's say, and doing some work, I, I like to be moving, I pace. <laughs> I'll pace up and down in my apartment or I'll be on the wall and I just, I feel like my brain works better. I love that idea of setting it up for standing. Thanks, Bill. Hey, thanks, Shaki. Appreciate it. I, I'll second that. Standing definitely, um, particularly with my I'll third it. <laughs> I have long classes, so me standing would definitely help me out a lot. Beautiful. Thank you, Donald. When you said 55% body language, your tone of voice went up, and I just remembered that one number. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the whole point. When I put my whole body into it, everybody experiences the energy flow. And so the thing is, when people are like, I'm sitting here talking with a monotone voice and I'm telling you all the information that you need to know, you're going to go to sleep. You're going to lose your entire audience, right? If there's no inflection, if there's no energy, then there's just a drop and your whole audience just becomes disengaged. And what they're doing, like, what time is it now? What should I be watching? You know what I mean? Like, it's like we have attention spans of a gnat. If you're not <laughs> pulling your, in, your audience in, you're going to lose them. Great insight. Thank you, Eleanor. Eleanor? Yay, Eleanor. Thank you. Anyone else want to share something that they heard? Yes, Jennifer. Bill, so what, I've, what, what landed for me was in regards to noise in the background, because now that we are getting into the world of Zoom connection, it's almost like holding a container yes. that we're intimately in. And then if there's additional noise behind there, then trust is lost Yeah, That's from right. within the space. I'm Beautiful. Confused. Nice. Everyone, thank you, Jennifer. Woo, yay. Excellent. All right. I, I loved. Say it again. Michael, go ahead. Yeah, I love that container that you're in, Jennifer. It's very quiet and very peaceful and serene. <laughs> very nice. Thank Yay. you. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Woo. All right. We're almost through. So just give me, let's see here. Um, nope. Here we go. All right. Thank you for hanging in with me. I appreciate it. And get that back to here. Uh, okay, so knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. 
I love this quote from Bruce Lee because it really is about applying what you know. Going back to the cone of knowledge, 90% retention of everything you learned here tonight is going to be in the doing, not in the share, in just the, the, the saying. But knowledge is not success. Knowledge with action is success. And so when you take anything you learn from tonight and you take bold action on it, you'll have it for life. Another way to say this, always pass on what you have learned. As the wise Yoda like to tell us in, uh, in, in The Empire Strikes Back, and the context of this is, the wisdom of this is when you teach one other person one thing you learned tonight, you reinforce it in yourself, that which you know. So if you really wanna know what you know, teach it. Because if you're explaining it to somebody else, it reinforces your knowledge inside of you instantly, and it sort of creates a new pathway in your brain. Mylar is actually the connection of, of how your brain science works to connect back to your ideas. And the more you use them, the stronger they become. And we, yes, go ahead. Someone's jumping in. Should I yeah. speak? Yeah, yeah. yeah please do. So for me, it's like uh, knowing your audience beforehand. Yes, exactly. It's knowing your audience beforehand, and it's the ability to connect with them in a way that's going to really land for them. Beautifully so for that, yes. Preparation. Nice. Beautiful. Excellent. So I'm going to share one more thing here on the slides here, which is, this is one of my favorites. So get ready for this. So how many of us finish our presentation with any questions? Don't do this. It's the worst possible way to end a presentation. Why? Because it's not a powerful question. Most people say, no, they're not actually gonna share if you don't make them sort of think about what they just learned. So any questions? Nope, I'm good. And that's how most people end their presentations. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Don't end your presentations this way. Instead, do what we just did with Donna. What's one key insight you learned today? Any variation of that is a powerful question that gets people to think, what did I learn? What did I get out of this? And they're retaining it. They're it's helping them and it's helping helping their uh, their team. So what's one thing you learned from my section? And just take yourself off mute and dive in. Hey, Bill, this is Adam Fibish. Hey, Adam. Um, I, I think one of the key insights for me is um, not to get distracted by the chat, because I've always thought that if I'm not looking at the chat, I'm not paying attention to somebody asking a question or somebody telling me that they can't see the screen or something like that. But yeah, I do get distracted that way. So I appreciate you highlighting that that's actually a mistake. Um, and then to add, I just want to ask that when Donna was presenting, I think you were moderating the chat as a partner for her. Yes. And so it seems like that that's something you would advocate, yes? I totally advocate it. Partnerships are cr so key in these Zoom calls. And the reason why is I don't want to be fumbling with technology when I'm actually speaking. Now, I'm doing it now because actually Donna had a conflict. She could only go until about 8.30. She actually stayed later so that she could finish up her section of the presentation, which I sincerely appreciate. But in a normal situation, we tag team. Like, she would take over the technology and I would do the presentations. But, but I did that for her because th it's the right thing to do. Absolutely. If you have a second person that could be a co-presenter or co-facilitator with you, it'll make your life so much easier. They can be paying attention to the chat. They can engage. They can have other conversations. They notice when hands are being raised. They can notice when someone's like, hmm, and they're not even raising their hand, but they're, just, they're not really sure what they're saying, right? So they can notice that stuff and they can I call it out. If you're doing this on your own, it's, it can be a lot more challenging. Thank you. It's a great question. Donald. Uh, so um, you guys, you too. Felicia, I'll send you a dollar. Um, I, I had the co-facilitation. In, in a situation like that, do, in terms of sharing screens, um, can anyone share a screen in, 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 a, in a Zoom call like that? Or? Absolutely. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Hey, Mark, just for fun, do you want to share your screen right now? Do you can put any document up there, and I know I'm calling you out of there. Actually, go to, yeah, that's great. Perfect. Okay, great. All right. That's it. And then he can close it. So he's going to show, if you wanted to teach, teach us about eBay right now, boom, he's on. And now it's like, okay, thanks so much, Mark. And then Mark shuts it down and we're right back. All right. I thought that it was only the facilitator, the organizer was able to share screens like that. So if it gets out of hand and I'm worried about too many people sharing the screen, as the facilitator, I have the power to turn that function off. 
Got you. Okay. So that is an option, but I leave it turned on in case someone else wants to share. And most people don't abuse that privilege. And hell, most people don't even know how to do it. So the <laughs> experts, they know not to do it. And those who don't know is, are rarely going to have it happen. So yeah, but it's great. I mean, and there's two different distinctions. I'm using the meeting side of, of Zoom. There's also a webinar version. And so you can go either side. So this is, has like, you know, up to 100 participants uh, in their first ver version of the package. And then I also added on webinar for when I want to do more intensive deep dive learning sessions where there's a lot more content. This one's I want more sharing, right? So depending on what you want, you set it up that way. This is the gallery view. We can all see each other. We can all connect with each other. Other times, if it's just I want to share a ton of content, it might be better off in a webinar where you control the settings. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes, um, so, um, so when there are too many people, uh, so you have uh, alluded to this, that's to be present and engaging. But sometimes I find that I don't know who picked up or who, who's raising the hand and there are two screens. So how do we manage that? Yeah. So if you have two people, you are on the first screen and the other person's on the second screen. That's no, the, that's I'm saying they say, for example, like right now we have two screens, like we have yeah. so many people, somebody from the second page might have just you know raised a hand to speak how do i as a speaker know like who is going to speak or who's raised a hand that's a great question Chermiska. thank you for asking so there's three things that you might have heard me say number one i said just take yourself off mute and jump in right so so if someone if i didn't see someone's hand raise and they take themselves off mute and start jumping most of us are going to back off and give them the space so that's the first way number two i also said or you can go into the chat and I've, and I've been reading through the comments and I'm like, Vanessa, she didn't want to interrupt, but she wrote something in the chat and I brought it up as soon as we were done with the last point, right? And the third way is to actually ask people to look for, you know, if, they, if someone else is in gallery view and they see someone else's hand raised, I encourage them to say, hey, if you see someone else's hand that I haven't called on, call it out. Now, I didn't do that tonight because we've only been doing a little bit of sharing, but if we were doing like regular sharing, that's what I would do. I would say, okay, Mark, I'm, I'm putting you as a plant and I'm going to have you look at other people and scan. If anyone has a question, their hand up and I don't call on them, you call on them, right? And he just knows to do that. And if I have a partner, they'll do that, right? So I can call for support. But yeah, these are that's a great question, Sherman. So did I answer the question? Yeah, you did. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Hey, Bill, what do you, uh, when you talk about webinar, where's the setting to change it to webinar? Okay, so it actually is a different package in Zoom. So you actually uh -huh. have to buy it. But assuming you have purchased it, what happens is in the setup. It's not in the actual platform itself. It's when you set up the call, you're already thinking, do I want this to be a webinar or do I want this to be a, a meeting? And so the distinction for Zoom is a meeting is this. We have everybody can turn on their cameras, everybody's sharing, we're all interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. You have breakout rooms if you wanna do that. So the virtual side, in, in webinar, it's a separate platform where it defaults to everybody's muted until the, the actual presenter unmutes you. And so it's a little bit more control and it's a little more one way. And it's specifically designed, especially if you're recording video content and you have a very clear, crisp message you want to get across and say 30 minutes and do it tight, you'll do that first and then you'll open it up to discussion afterwards. But that's the distinction. You set it up as a webinar and then you mm. enroll people into doing that. And a follow-up, is there a way to uh, put your picture like underneath the camera as you're presenting, as the presenter? Yeah. Um, is there a yeah. way to control where you show up on the people's uh, computer? So uh, usually in, the, in when you're presenting, it, the, the noise itself will raise that person to the top when, you're not, when uh, share, I share my screen. So when I share my screen, I should be one or two, meaning you, I should be up there to the top, but some, it, sometimes it doesn't work exactly that way. But generally the default for Zoom is it tries to make whoever's speaking be, be visible. And so it does recalculate and reshuffle the video screens automatically. So you don't have to do that. But uh, Eleanor, did you have an answer to that? I was gonna say, I don't know if this helps, but on top, it's a speaker view. So you press that and then like Bill will fill up the screen and then you can press gallery view and then you'll see everyone again. Yes, okay. thank you, Eleanor. That's, That's absolutely you correct. And Shaki, what you are, I hear you saying in terms of the, when you're on doing the slide presentation as well, is that what you're saying? So yeah, it will, it will go there. And if it's really important that only you show up as the presenter, yes, you can, when you set it up, you can say default to off or make it so that no one can turn their, their video screen on until you give them permission, in which case you're the only one who has video. So if that's like a must have, then I would just default to not having everybody's faces. I don't think that the, the, the cost outweighs the benefit, but it is an option. Great question. Uh, thank you, Bill. Absolutely. I have a question. Please go for it. Okay. So thank you. Um, so if I'm a presenter or a, a moderator, and I, I would like to ask you, how do you, in this setting, 
let's say somebody like their their sound really sucks, their 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 framing really sucks, their lighting really sucks, and you want to encourage them to come into the light or change their sound, but you want to do it in a way that's not making them feel shamed or that they suck. You do you, are you old enough to know the movie Poltergeist? Yes. Come into the lights. There is peace and tranquility in the lights, right? So you can be goofy, you can be fun. Um, mm -hmm. you can be, but basically the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to call someone out. And so for, you know, if I see, notice someone that's not in the light, I would probably private message them in the chat. Um, that's what I do when I'm on a, a group meeting and I want people to be on camera and I notice that there's more participants than there are on camera, I'll actually go look and see who's on there. And I can actually, when I do the participants and it says manage participants, I can see who's got their video on or not. And I can private message them and say, hey, would you mind turning your camera on? And it's just to them and nobody else sees that message. So that's another way I can do it privately. And uh, same thing with the, with the light. Can you, can you uh, put, get, get closer to a light so I can see your beautiful face, right? Something can like I just uh, jump in real quick? Donna, uh, Donna Thank you. does this wonderful thing. Where, you know, she says, uh, I, I love to see everyone's beautiful eyes. And that just was really engaging. Uh, and she, she commented on that earlier, but she, I remember she actually in mes in messaged me directly and said, I love to see your beautiful brown eyes. And so immediately I said, oh, let me turn my camera on, let me get my face closer and the whole nine. So um, just in an engaging way to make it a group statement that everyone feels really empowered to be a part of. Yes, beautiful, I love that. Thank you, Donald. Everyone give Donald the jazz hands. Nice. Hey, Bill. Yes, sir. I'd love to share something about technology for 90 seconds if I could. Please do it. So uh, inviting you all, we all know that with Corona, we may be doing this for a long time. So I would really think about maybe investing in some technology. And something that highly supports me is I run dual screens. So most computers can do this. Your iBooks, your iMacs can do it with an adapter. And you can set up an additional monitor if you'd like to be in a Zoom call and have one on the side. We have computers here in the office that the computer is $127 refurbished and with a ten with a $20 adapter, we run side-by-side -side monitors and it really supports the ability to have speaker on one side, gallery view on the other, you know, G sheets up on the left, Zoom meeting on the right. And then something I wanna share with y'all, um, I'm gonna share my screen. Please do. This is a very inexpensive uh, light. So this is $27 online. Can y'all see this? Yes, thank you. So this is a small eight inch light. They come much larger. You can get $50 ones, but this is something very basic. And what you want to do is just get a little light. And actually I'm going to order one because I look very blue. And what's really nice is if you could have just a nice warm glow, like if you all can see Extina, not to call you out, but she has beautiful light on her and it looks really good. And that's kind of what you're aiming to do. Any lights in the background, sorry to call out Shockey, Shaki, that one light in the background will make you dark instantly. So something like putting light in front of you would really uh, appreciate that. And if anyone has questions about processor speed and all that, I can help you. Oh yeah, Donald has a ring light. You could see that. Yeah, I'll stop sharing too. Yeah. That's Perfect. better, Shaki. The other thing you did. You put the light on your face. <laughs> There you go. See, we get to support each other. That's awesome. All right. So this is the last thing I want to share, and then we will wrap up for tonight. And that is, why are we doing this? I noticed that this was a completely free webinar. And I want to know, just by a show of hands, did you get value from tonight? Did you learn something tonight? Yes? Excellent. And so the reason we're doing this is because we're actually trying to actually uh, support another program that's coming through, uh, just coming up on April 17th, and that's Transformation of Race. It's a journey of the, to the race of soul. It's actually with, um, with Betty Spruill. She's amazing. And this is about connecting to our community. And this is something that uh, both I want to promote, but I also want to share something with you, is that normally when I do the four and a half hour version of this workshop, this is a thousand dollar training that I've been doing now for with the ultra community for a hundred dollars a person and we're doing totally free tonight and i'm committed to doing more of these sessions and i'm not going to ask people to pay to participate i want everyone to get their value 
And what I'm gonna suggest is if, if you feel so inclined and you would like to make any contribution of any amount tonight, you can Venmo to Eileen Daniels. And I'm gonna have Eileen sort of speak into this in a moment, uh, just to share her face and see who she is. But Eileen Daniels is my treasurer. She's helping me actually put together uh, a donation for all of those people who want to go to transformation of race, but are having a scarcity conversation about their money, that they can't afford to go to this. It is a three, uh, $300 uh, event. And for a lot of people, that's $300. They're really afraid to invest in this moment with not knowing what's going on with, uh, with coronavirus, et cetera. So even a small donation, if you thought this was valuable tonight and you wanted to contribute something, Venmo Eileen Daniels. And it means the world to us because we're trying to raise money for those people who really want to go to Transformation of Race and can't afford to do so. And if that is you, you want to go to Transformation of Race but can't afford to do so, then reach out to Eileen Daniels because she's also making a list of the people who need support. And with that, I want to say thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to Eileen Daniels, just so she can say hi and be seen. Hello. Hello, all. Hi. Wow, I hi, learned Eileen. so much from this. Hi, all. Can I learned so much. Me? Say again, Jennifer? The screen was black. I'm sorry, Bill. Can we just see like the transformation of race uh, screen? I think we use it. Yes, yes, yes. You want me to show the transformation screen? Hold on. Oh, oh. I, yeah, it didn't the show whole up. Time right? I was, so the whole time I was talking, you weren't seeing my slides. Okay, hold on. That's all, folks. Is this one? Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for, you can always call me out when I'm doing this. Can you see it now? No. No. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in full screen, you're not seeing the stuff that I'm seeing. Did you see, uh, so just add a quick, just for quick feedback. Did you see these screens or were these blank as well? Not all of them. No. Oh, interesting. The, it wasn't synced up. That okay. we saw that. We, yeah. we, oh, we, we saw it like after you mentioned it. Fascinating. Well, thank you for that. I, I don't know what, so I'm going to, I get to play with, with uh, Keynote. I appreciate this very much. That's fantastic feedback for me as a, as a presenter. As I said, I'm learning too. I'm in this process and I'm trying to do the best that I can. And then you probably didn't see this then either, the Venmo slide for Eileen Daniels. Probably didn't see that one either. But that is that is the right spelling? E-I-L-E-E-N? Yes. Eileen, tell me. Did I, did I, did I get it wrong? Yes, um, I, I put on the chat my Venmo um, handle. Perfect. It's uh, at Eileen Dash Daniels. I, you, have, I, you have a typo. I think Daniels. that Daniels denial. is spelled incorrectly. Oh. It's not, yeah. it's not denials. You. Yeah, <laughs> I was wondering why, what, what, what did I get wrong? D N I E L S. So you'll have to forget. Forgive me. I, I grew up with, uh, with undiagnosed um, uh, dyslexia. I didn't actually learn it until I was in college that I grew up through with this dyslexia my entire life. And uh, it wasn't until very, very late in my schooling that I learned this. And so I've had to slow down, but I still transpose letters and I still make that switch around. And so my biggest fear is reading publicly, which I'm combating by reading my kids' at, uh, books at night. But, uh, but that is one of the challenges because it does get jumbled. So thank you for your patience and thank you for calling it out. I appreciate it. All good. You're awesome, Bill. Thank you. You're amazing, Bill. Bye. Awesome. So, yes, I just wanted to um, extend my thanks for this incredible virtual meeting. Um, I did take Bill's course in person all of the four hours, and it was very engaging. And um, you, you, we, we, you couldn't very much hide in a personal um, training like that. And so I can see how, as we're moving on to AI and Zoom calls and stuff, um, gaining everyone's attention is a create, uh, creates a, quite a challenge. And so I wanted to presence that perhaps that we can um, put a ground rule. I don't know, I, I came in late. So maybe the ground rule is, you know, um, put your phones away <laughs> or something um, so that you set this set the tone like this is you know thank you for coming and also you're in class or something like that but um, I'm so excited um, to have Betty create this transformation of race uh, she and Tanya um, were developing this as uh, we came into a um, personal chat for it's called um, dispelling global racism. So we have about 34 members that actually speak 
on a chat. We're a bit distracted now with everything going on and since through the holidays, but um, we can't ignore the fact that there has been a viral disease that before um, COVID-19 and it is all the isms in the world that is has had viral effects on our hearts and in our minds and in our construct of how we see humanity. So um, I'm excited to learn from Betty Spruill and I'm so grateful to Bill to offer his time and his intelligence and his um, masterful storytelling expertise for us. So it's a dual win-win, black-black situation. And I really implore you to, if you aren't not able to register and if you are able to contribute to supporting others, we'd like to have as many people attend as possible. Um, and Thank you, Eileen. I appreciate you very much. Everyone give Eileen jazz hands. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you for that. Uh, and Daniel, you had one quick announcement you wanted to make about the business vortex. Hey, everyone. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bill, I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, right after this, we are all going over to anybody who can make it. We'd love to have you over for the Business Vortex call. It's going to be fun, awesome, and especially right now with what's going on with the coronavirus, uh, this is a huge opportunity for the whole entire community to step up and start supporting each other. And I'm looking forward for all the connections that get to be made. So I will send over on the chat i'm gonna put it on right now for uh, the link so that everybody knows um maybe not the link but the id so all you got to do is just type that in and then you'll have that you can put in both and daniel what i want to tell everyone this is also a pro tip when you're doing your presentations you want to share a link the chat goes away so what you want to do is daniel go ahead and put it in there and what i'm going to share with you is the do you want to copy and paste this even if you choose that you don't want to go or you're not sure you want to go in this moment you can still copy and paste the link directly into the um uh into your browser or another document so that way you have the link after it's gone because what ends up happening is people post links and then they shut their zoom down and then they can't get access to it so daniel go ahead and post it now Okay, I'm going to do it right now. Thank you. And Donald, I also saw your chat. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to, well, while Daniel's doing that, I'm going to put up the screen so you can do a quick screenshot of that slide you wanted to see. Well, Dan, so we, we are multifaceted here. Hold on, this one. Now, let's do, I'm going to, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to go full screen. But when I hit the screen, it might turn black again, so I'm very cautious of that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And does that full screen or no? It's good. good. Yeah. Hey. Yes. So That's what I'm hearing is that. what I'm hearing is keynote is intermittent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I need to be more mindful of my audience and check in to see that they're seeing the screen and not a black screen. Yeah. Yeah. Screenshot it. Oh, how do you do a screenshot? Uh, are you on a Mac or a PC? We'll do both. <laughs> on a laptop, it's a PC. Mac. Okay, so for the Mac people, you're gonna do the little command uh, next to the space bar. So there's a command. And then you're going to do shift. So you're going to put your index finger on command, your uh, ring finger on shift. And with your other hand, you're going to press three. And you'll hear that clicking sound. And there you go. And for the PC team, um, I believe, actually, someone help me out. Because I used to be a PC guy, and I switched to Mac a long time ago. I can quickly Google it. But do you know off the top of your head what the keys are for PC? Control P. It is just control P. Go control ahead. and P. And they'll ask you if you want to print and then you just save it. Great. Perfect. Uh, that didn't happen for me. <laughs> it did or did not? It did not. Control okay. P. Hang on. That's a on the PC. Just give me one second. I'm going to do this. I'm on a laptop. laptop. It's a Dell laptop. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Give me just a second. So when we get into a situation like this, how do I? Do you have SNP? Excuse me? If you, have, if you have Microsoft Office, you have a, do your search with Corona, Cro whatever Croatia the girl's name is, or your computer's name. In the search bar, type in the word SNP, S-N-I-P. Hold on one moment. Can you see my screen now uh, on uh, Google or no? What project yes. to your profession? Okay, hold on, that's the wrong one. Let me try again. Here. How about now? Uh, yes, hold on. Yeah. A Google Sheet, yeah. We, we just lost it. 
Sorry. <laughs> Last one, promise. Here we go. <laughs> this is what this, this is Tia. Oh. Yes, Tia. For PC, you in the lower left, your control button and upper right is a PR space SC yeah. SCR button. Yeah. Could hit those together and it'll do your screen. Cool. And then this is the picture version of it. There you go. These are your options. All right. Nice. So it's not happening. I think it's because I'm on a laptop and it's not considering itself a PC and uh, that didn't work. So. Um, uh, okay, wait, one more, one more, hold on. So you see this one right here? So th this is your, this is your, even though this is not a lap, not a laptop, uh, this is Windows 7. So you're gonna do this uh, Alt Shift 4. Mm -hmm. See that? Next to your screen. Try that one. Try it right now, just take a picture of this. I made a sound, but I don't know what it did. Yeah, then it worked. I'll show you how to get the, the picture next, but just go okay. ahead right now. <laughs> Going back. Let me shop, stop the share. Let me go back to the screen share. Here we go. And do that exact same thing one more time. Let me go full screen to get the best picture. And do exactly the same thing. We have a black screen. Oh, black screen. Hold on, hold on. And how about now? There's a picture. Okay, and then and if I do it again? There it is, beautiful. beautiful. Got it. That's it. So Donald, try try that again and I'll show you how to pull it up. Shift four. Uh-huh. So control shift four. Control. Or alt shift four? No, it's alt shift four. Whatever is to the left of your space bar. Right. So it doesn't work when we're here, it worked before. Okay. But you know what? I will Google that because Mayor was kind enough to send it to me. Great. Perfect. Beautiful. All right. Thank you, Mayor. I love great, you. Great. Great to be in such a great, caring, loving community. I have a question. Yes. Um, so just now oh, with the right. screen. One sec, Justine, one second. For any of those of you who need to drop, feel free. The, the session is over. I'm going to stay on for questions if you have any other questions. And then I'll head on over to see Daniel in his uh, business vortex. So if you are done and you're complete, feel free. I will, do, I will not take offense. And Justine, go ahead and ask your question. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. OK, just now I took the screenshot and I was able to get a screenshot. However, it did take the slide and then it had the little mini you. Um, little um, thumb tab nail, whatever. Right, it's it just gets to show whatever's on your screen. So it's it just shows what's on your screen. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yep. yep. And I it doesn't seem to be, a, there it gets to be though a way that if I am the presenter, that I am sharing my screen and people are seeing it without the little me. Right. So what the thing is, when you do a screenshot, it's whatever's on your screen. So you can minimize things. So if you wanted to have a clean shot and without your face or faces of others, you would hit the minimize of the, of the picture so that those go away and you can hide the other bar so that all you see is the, is the person presenter slide. So you have control on your side when you do the, the, the screen capture to control your elements of what else is showing there. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Great question. Team, thank you so much. Thanks for staying on. I really appreciate you all and uh, have a wonderful evening. I will talk to you soon. We'll be on thank the chat. Thank, thank you, Jill. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Great. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night.